Hey kids, it's Mr. Fla here, hope you're well. Out and about today on a beautiful autumnal day, a little bit chilly, but I'm on another bike and uh, as it's a Friday when I'm recording this, I thought I'd go Chinese. Today, I'm on another Sinus motorcycle. This is the Sinus Terrain. If you're interested in 125cc adventure bikes, not something you say very often, then stick around and stay tuned. So the Sinus Terrain then, the reason why I say not something you say very often is because uh, how many other 125cc adventure bikes are there out there? I can't think of any off the top of my head, although I may be doing some manufacturer disservice somewhere. But uh, So this is a bit of a unique in class motorcycle then. I think it looks absolutely cracking. There's no doubt of course that the, uh, the guys that designed it have uh, looked at the BMW GS and thought, oh, we'll have a go at copying one of those. So it's got a lot of uh, GS-esque look about it, but as I'm a GS fan, that, that works for me. I think it looks a, a pretty little bike. It is of course a 125, so I'm not looking for, oh, you know, I'm not expecting any great things of it. Uh, I have ridden a number of 125s recently, including of course things like the best-selling Yamaha YS 125, so I have got some benchmarks to compare it with. Similarly, I rode the uh, Sinus RSX 125, I think it was, last year, which was a little uh, learner legal 125, which I really liked. And this bike's got the same engine as that, the YS 125. It's built uh, in Yongshen in China. It's actually made in the same factory uh, as makes the BMW G310 GS, would you believe? They also do work for Peugeot and for Suzuki. So as Chinese bike manufacturers go, it's one of the uh, more serious manufacturers that does some proper stuff. I have no problem with Chinese motorcycles. As I've said many times before, I'd rather just take them for a ride and see how they go and draw my own conclusions. I rode one all through last winter as well. Uh, take a look at my reviews long term as of the Sinus Scrambler. It held up very well through the winter. I did ACF 50 etc. Looked after it like I would any bike uh, and it did absolutely fine. It uh, held up well in the winter so I suspect this would be exactly the same. So this is absolutely the first time I've ridden this bike. It got delivered to me today and I'm going to be keeping it for a few weeks so I can get a good feel for it again. Uh, and hopefully I'll do a few videos with it over the next few weeks, including a long-term review at the end, when I get to know it better. But this time, this is my first ride, so it really is an initial impressions review. Bit of a corner cutting there, a bit damp on the old roads today, so uh, got to be a bit careful about sliding off. This bike has some tyres in it that look like they might be off-roady, but they're not really, they're not proper knobblies or anything like that. Uh, but as I say, it's wet on the road, so I've got to be a little bit careful. There's no traction control, of course, on this bike and there's no ABS either. When you do a 125 uh, you don't have to have ABS on a 125. Uh, instead I think you have to have linked brakes which is what this has got so when you actuate the front brake uh, the back brake is actuated as well and, and vice versa. In reality I can't feel it doing that um, just trying the brakes there they feel pretty good they seem to work fine. In terms of the bike's peppiness it's go absolutely on par with any other 125 I've ridden. It's got a five-speed gearbox on this. Just knock it into fifth now and here I am on a back road doing well 50 miles an hour and getting 49. It feels like it's got plenty more to give. It's no problem at all. Obviously if you're a big heavy person it may struggle a bit more but yeah as I say it feels like it's got more to give. We'll uh, test out some faster roads on my in-depth review. But certainly keeping up with commuter traffic is not going to be an issue on this. Riding position, nice and upright in your classic sort of adventure-esque style. So really comfy. Seat is uh, yeah, comfy enough, maybe a little on the hard side, but not. we're not talking KTM hard. <laughs> in fact, it feels like they've probably taken the dimensions from bikes like the uh, GS, because it feels like a very familiar riding position. You could certainly ride on this for a long time without feeling uncomfortable. The little non-adjustable windscreen seems to be doing a good job. I've not got any buffeting air hitting me. I'm in a complete bubble of calm here around the chest area. I have got uh, wind hitting, uh, or have I? In fact, I think it deflects it right over me. I'm only five foot eight, and I seem to be completely in the clear, so the windscreen works well, uh, which is unusual, because some bikes you get on, you, you get your head in a dirty air or whatever, but this one, no problem at all. Suspension on it, very basic and non-adjustable, but uh, doing a fine job on this road. Again, I'm not uh, expecting great things of this bike. It is a budget machine. It costs something like two and a half thousand pounds. 
or might be 2,900 again. I'll go through the spec when I stop a bit later. But the ride feels plush enough. Let me just check, we've got a car behind me, but he's a little way behind. I'm just going to try the front brakes. Yeah, they feel like adequate, they're not, uh, they're not going to make your eyes pop out, but they stop the bike. It's got a pleasing engine note on it. Too raucous. Again, it's the sort of bike that if you want a commuter, it'll be fantastic because it actually comes with luggage as well as standard on this. Three boxes, which I'll show you in a minute. They're not uh, top quality and they're not gargantuan, but if you just want to carry your, your lunch or you know a laptop or an iPad or whatever, or a small amount of groceries, you could certainly do that. I think you could probably fit a helmet in the top box as well. I'll we'll investigate that as I get to know the bike more. So very practical. And while we're talking practical, frugal to run as well. It being a 125, you're going to get, uh, I would imagine, 100 miles per gallon easily out of it. So cheap to run. Looking at the accommodation here, I think it's pretty smart. We've got an LCD uh, speed readout, a proper rev counter, which I like, and a proper fuel gauge. You know, there are a few main, main manufacturers that could uh, learn from that. And the switch gear seems absolutely fine. It's no lesser quality than any other mainstream motorcycle uh, manufacturer that I've ridden with. So you can let me go, yes he is, thank you. Super lightweight at 150 kilograms, so it's really easy to ride, non-intimidating. So you can chuck it about. I've said before I love small capacity bikes because you can ride them at their limit and uh, just really chuck them about and enjoy the performance that they do have. I know not everybody gets that but uh, this is uh, absolutely there with that. I mean you can chuck this around. This sort of bike you can have in your garage as a go-to chores bike. If you're just nipping down the shops just to buy a few bits and pieces or you want to go to the bank or something and you're just wearing a pair of jeans and you want to nip out quickly, chuck on a helmet and this is the bike to take. You know, my first impressions are, this is a nice little machine. If you can get over your Chinese bike biases, there's nothing wrong with this. Right, uh, let me head up here. This is a lovely Great Missenden. I'm trying to keep it so the sun's behind us, because it's really bright sunshine today. Uh, I'll head up here towards the uh, posh tennis club, and I'll show you around the bike. Well, something else, just uh, to mention while I'm rolling up to the uh, tennis club and a uh, little walk around. Uh, the, uh, the clutch action on here is nice and light feels really nice to use and whilst I was mentioning the uh, little display panel here which I think looks quite cute actually there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever as I say proper fuel gauge trip count there's everything you need including a, f um, a gear position indicator but also there on the right a USB charging port really handy if you want to plug in your phone use it as a sat nav or whatever or indeed plug in a sat nav then you could mount one of those up on here no problem at all just like the little RSX125 that I really raved about from SNES, this one seems to have everything, you know, thought about it. Seems like it's reasonable quality, the fit and finish is nice, it's got these crash bars as well, look. Uh, yeah. I'm liking it. Right, let's uh, get up here, park up and I'll show you around the bike. Man, I told you that sun was bright. <laughs> well, let's stick the bike. Uh, over here somewhere, not right by the bins. Let's shove her over here with the sun it. Okie dokie, that should do nicely. And this is uh, again like some of the other Chinese bikes I've ridden. This is one of these bikes that if you put the stand down, even in neutral, uh, the engine won't run, uh, which is a bit annoying. But there you go, see, engine straight off when you put the stand down. While I'm talking about stands, let's just jump off and show you. Oops, I'll come around this way so I'm not uh, blinding you. Uh, you can see on this, even though uh, you know I moaned about this stand and the edge again off, it does have, as standard, a proper central stand, which is a nice addition. Again, mainstream manufacturers could learn from that. And uh, you can run the bike with it on the centre stand if you want to, so uh, there you go, that may help. Anyway, here we are, the Sinist Terrain, as I say, uh, looks very much a bit of a copy of all the popular adventure bikes, isn't it? But uh, there we go, I think it looks pretty cool. I'll, uh, I'll just get my phone out and uh, I'll talk you through the spec in the usual way. Okay, here we are then, the uh, Sinis 
Terrain, 125cc Adventure Bike. Who thought uh, you'd put those words in that order? <laughs> so let's just uh, show you around. Let me show you the engine first that I mentioned, uh, the one that's built uh, by the same people that make uh, parts of BMWs, Peugeots and Suzukis. Uh, 125cc, it's known as the ZS 125. I guess that's referring to Zongshen. Four-stroke, single-cylinder air-cooled electronic fuel injection. Um, so uh, what more can I say about that? It seems fine when you're riding the bike. It doesn't feel uh, any different to any other 125 I've ridden. It puts out 11.2 brake horsepower, 8.3 uh, pounds-feet of torque. So not going to win any races, but adequate for this sort of bike. Uh, let's go around and have a look at the... I don't want to keep blinding you in this sun. It's so bright. The brakes on here. We've got a single disc on the front. That's uh, 280 mil, And it's got some beefy-looking calipers on there. look like uh, dual pot calipers. Don't know who makes them. No doubt uh, in-house made. And some fairly big-looking forks as well. Uh, Suspension-wise, it's basic. There is no adjustability on the uh, suspension. But as I say, it looks quite beefy on the front there. Uh, don't know what the travel is either. But I imagine you could do some light off-roading on it, given it's a 125, but it's nice and light for that. Uh, what else to say? Seat height, I mentioned nice and low. Uh, seat is comfy. Uh, on the hard side, I guess. But not terribly hard, not like a KTM, say. 730mm, so nice and low. Overall weight of the bike, 150 kilograms. So if you drop it, you're going to easily be able to pick it up. Now that fuel tank on there, 14 litres, um, as I say, you can expect about 100 miles per gallon, so super frugal to run. Oh, um, let's have a look at the, I mentioned that there was a USB port on here, uh, that lurks just under that little cover there, you just flip that up, and you can plug your phone or sat nav, whatever, in there, which is nice. Switch gear, as I say, is just the same as any other switch gear you'd find on a bike, basic, because there's no complex electronics or anything here. But uh, yeah, that's all, nothing wrong with the quality there. And there's the little non-adjustable screen as well. Uh, let's just show you the, yeah, let's show you the top box and the luggage that comes with it. If it uses the same key as ignition, which is nice. So here we go, you get this three box luggage. It's not detachable easily. You have to actually get your spanners out if you want to take it off, which is a bit of a nuisance, but you know, it's obviously again built to a budget. And then you use the same key as I say, just in there, these clips. Just unclip like that, and bingo, you've got some storage. Now I don't know whether you could, it looks like you probably can fit a helmet in there, but I need to, I'm yet to try that. But certainly you can fit your sarnies in there and so on. And of course you've got these uh, other panniers at the side as well, uh, that you can put some extra stuff in. They look very thin though, you literally, it's going to be a magazine or something in there, isn't it? Nice looking little exhaust on here, good engine note as well, for a little 125. And as I mentioned, you've got the uh, crash bars as well. So again, if you are a new rider, if you want to take it off-roading a bit, uh, you can do so, and there's some protection for the bike. Nice hand guards as well, so that again, plays to its off-road uh, credentials, but also keeps your hands warm if you're commuting, more to the point, probably more usefully, I'd say. All right, what else to say about it? Price uh, from 2549, it says on the website, and that compares with something like a Yamaha YS125, which is 2900, so they're 350 quid more, but you don't get the luggage, you don't get the style, you don't get the riding position. Uh, uh, so, you know, you make your mind up whether you think that's good value. I think it's pretty good value, personally. Uh, what else to say? It's available in silver or red. This is obviously the silver. Um, well, five-speed gearbox, as I mentioned that. And it comes with a two-year warranty. So, uh, all in all, I think for the money, that's quite an impressive little package. Alrighty, that's enough of that, then. Let's uh, jump back on. Ride us some more. Crikey, loads of uh, cars have just suddenly turned up. It must be, yeah. Uh, school chucking out time or something. Right, let's get the show back on the road. We've got the stand up. Turn her up. Right. So light and unintimidating this with a low seat height as well. Really good uh, turning circle. Where's this lady going? Let's dip in front of her. Got a feeling she could be faffing about for a while. Right, let's just give her a quick go down a slightly faster road before those school buses come. Just out of interest, I'm going to be heading back uh, to the west, so the sun's going to be in your eyes. I apologise for that. But we'll just see what we can wind her up to quickly. So, it doesn't feel particularly sluggish to me for a 125. I've read some reviews that said it was very slow, and uh, again, all 125s are slow, of course. But it doesn't feel any slower than any others. Right, let's get out here quick. So, okay, I'm winding the throttle fully on and we're just about to go uphill here. 
fourth gear, 47 miles an hour, and I am thrashing the pants off it, has to be said. I'm uphill with a, with a headwind, 50 miles an hour in fourth, uphill. Let's go for fifth, and I'll tuck down a bit. Okay, it's bogging down a little bit up the hill. That's interesting, because I was easily getting 50 on that lane earlier. But then I wasn't going uphill and I didn't have a headwind. Let's go back to, uh, okay, there we go. Look, now I'm off that uh, climb. Speed's building up 52, 53. We'll tuck down again. Quite like this little rev counter, it's quite natty. There you go, 55 miles now. Look, I have got a little bit of a headwind, uh, and that's on a level road. 55 seems to be where it tops out. 56, there we go. I think the only faster 125 I've been on was the little Suzuki uh, GSX 125, the little sports bike. That one uh, you get over 60 on that, but again, this doesn't pretend to be a sports bike. So there we are, that's uh, basically it for my first ever ride on the Sinis Terrain. As you can tell, for what it is, I'm quite impressed. I'm going to be riding it as much as I can over the next few weeks and I'll bring you some more videos as I get to know the bike more. So if you're interested in this bike, stick around and stay tuned to the channel and uh, I'll bring you some more on it soon. Okay, hope that's been of some interest. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Gosh, that sun is so bright. Does that shield you? Don't know. Anyway, look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mist and Fly. Cheerio.